Come out with your hands up. <laughs> Mom, you always do that. What? You always wake up so awake. <laughs> you kids today. When I was your age, I'd walk 40 miles to school every day, and that was after milking the cows. You lived in an apartment, Mom. <laughs> yeah, it was murder getting that cow on the elevator. <laughs> I have to get to the shop early, so your lunch is on the table and the money's in the refrigerator. Mom, this isn't New York. Couldn't we stop hiding the money? Nothing wrong with cold cash. <laughs> What's this, Mom? Oh, just some stuff I was looking at last night. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> You're still keeping his handprint? What was I, four years old? Right. Oh. Nursery school, you got a star for it. Mom, everybody got a star for it. You know, this represents a period in your life when you were an absolute angel. Lasted about a month. Ah, <laughs> uh, to Daddy, I love you. By the way, Daddy's spelled with two Ds. <laughs> oh, and look at this, your father's Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yeah, I made a fool out of myself in the fourth grade. I told everyone my father was in the Swiss Army. <laughs> <laughs> so how come you got all this stuff out? Just remembering. Tomorrow would have been our 17th anniversary. Tomorrow? Oh. Are you okay? I miss him. I miss him, too. That's it. Hi, Robin. Hi, Miss McNeil. I know I'm late. Is the boss here? She's in the back. You're only a minute late. She'll never know. You're late, Robin. <laughs> Don't worry about it. How was school today? Why? Have you heard something? <laughs> no, I was just asking. I met a boy. Really? Tell me about it. Well, I was at lunch finishing my peanut butter sandwich when this boy came up. <laughs> well, what did he say? He said, hi, I'm John. And what did you say? I said, room, room. <laughs> I see, then what? Well, then he said, and I can remember it exactly. Can I borrow your eraser? <laughs> well, that's a new approach, then what? Well, then I said, room, <laughs> And he took my little pink elephant eraser and left before I could get my tongue unstuck. Actually, it was a blessing. Otherwise, I would have had to say something real. <laughs> Robin, you really must do something about this shyness. You're as good as the next guy. Doesn't say much for the next guy. First you're late, now you're standing around. Dust the shelves. Yes, ma'am. Sweet girl. Just once, I wish she'd fight back. Of course, if she does, I'll fire her. <laughs> McNeil, I'd like to talk to you about your anniversary tomorrow. How did you know about that? It's good policy to know everything about people I hire. Besides, I like snooping. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to take you out to dinner tomorrow night. Well, that's very nice of you. It has nothing to do with nice. It's good labor management relations. A happy employee works her butt off. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila, but I really think I'd like to be alone. Bad idea. What are you going to do, sit around and mope? No, just thinking I was going to play some songs that we loved. If you want pain, slam a door on your foot. I'll be fine. OK. I made the offer. If you change your mind, tough. <laughs> I've got to get to the bank. They're about ready to close. Robin, would you take these customers, please? OK. Robin, where's my mother? In the back. Good. Now, look, just be careful what you say to her. We will. How many years were they married? Tomorrow would have been their 17th. 
What a shame. They never got to their silver anniversary or gold or diamond. The ones where you really get the good present. <laughs> Look, just be cheerful. Hi, kids. Hi! <laughs> Could I talk to you guys? Oh, sure, you can talk to us anytime. Sit down and be happy. We're here to listen. It's about Robin. We really have to do something for her. She's so shy. Kaz, you can help. Me? Yes, a woman likes to be appreciated by a man. So what does it have to do with Kaz? <laughs> He's a man. Say something nice to her. Like what? Compliment her. On what? Think of something. She has a fresh peanut aroma. Something else. <laughs> Suppose I can't. Just do it, do it. I'll do it, I'll do it. Kaz, look, this is just what Mom needs. Get her involved in other people's problems. It'll keep her mind off Dad. Okay, okay. Hi. Hi. If you're looking for my elephant eraser, it's gone. <laughs> Robin, I want to pay you a compliment. You're just after a free muffin. I'm not after a free muffin. I want to say I think you're nice. Here, have a muffin. <laughs> Are you trying to say maybe we're meant for each other? Well, it... we might as well be. We don't seem to be meant for anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Do I know girls or what? The amazing part is that it's working with cash. Well, with first loves, it doesn't always have to be Prince Charming. I remember mine, Eddie Forbes. He could pull his upper lip over his nose. Ew! He was eight. He didn't know about champagne and candlelight. This is great. Mom's involved. See, the big problem is tomorrow night when we're home alone. That's the anniversary. Then don't be alone. Oh, sure, we'll invite the Stanford Marching Band. I meant just a few people. Like maybe a slumber party, you, me, and Robin. A slumber party on my mother's anniversary? That's crazy. She'll catch on to it right away. Of course she will. So what you say is that you want to have it tonight, but she says you can't because it's a school night. So then you say you want to have it Saturday night, but then you remember I'm busy, so that's no good. So that only leaves tomorrow night. You know, it just might work. Of course. You have a lot to learn about being devious. <laughs> Melissa, you're incredible. That's the first time a girl ever said that to me. <laughs> See you later, Cass. You betcha. How'd it go? I think it went very well. She seems happy. We're going to a movie together. Cass, I think that's great. I'll say it is. She's paying. <laughs> A slumber party on a school night? No way. Okay. Well, hey, how about Saturday night? That's fine with me. Great. Oh, no, I just remembered. Melissa's busy. Robin is, too. Well, how about tomorrow night? You know, I'll bet Melissa... Melissa and Robin are available to be with us on my anniversary. Honey, I appreciate what you're trying to do for me. But it's really not necessary, really. I'll be fine. I really don't want to have a lot of people around me. You sure? Mm-hmm. Well, if it's all right with you, I'm going to put away my handprint and all that other stuff. Something's eating our roses. One me. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to spray. Next time we go shopping, would you remind me to buy something? Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, hold it down, guys, huh? I'm trying to record something. Hold it down. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, Lucy? This is Daddy. I don't know, it's hard to believe my big girl is five years old. I'm sorry, I can't be at your birthday party. I have to work at the fire station. But I just want you to know that I, I really miss being there. I love you very much. And if you look in Mommy's closet, I'll bet you find a present just for you. Happy birthday, sweetheart. You know what? Maybe we should have that slumber party tomorrow night. How are we 
we doing? Got everything? Yeah, I think so. Nuts, gummy bears, jelly bellies, cheese puffs, liquor swips. Have I forgotten anything? Yeah, health and nutrition. <laughs> oh, no, this is just for snacking. We're going to have a regular dinner. I'm making chili dogs. Melissa's bringing a tamale casserole. And for dessert, Robin is bringing peanut clusters and chocolate nut fudge. I'm bringing a stomach pump. <laughs> You girls are going to be awake all night. That's the whole idea of a slumber party. Of course. Where's my mind? Hi, I'm here. <laughs> you weren't invited. Maybe not in writing, but I knew deep down where I was wanted. <laughs> and you came anyway? <laughs> Look, this is girls only. Of course. Why do you think I'm here? <laughs> Goodbye, Kaz. Who is that? <laughs> Kaz trying to crash the party. Oh, of course. Did he try that old pizza delivery trick? Mommy's not that stupid. <laughs> How you doing, honey? Okay. How about you? I think this was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Come on in. Thank you. Candy corn. Oh, good. Somebody uh -huh. brought a vegetable. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi. Melissa, what's the suitcase for? All you need is pajamas. That's all I brought. But I need a choice, don't I? <laughs> here, let me help you with that. What do you got in here? Roseanne's wedding gown? <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. I love roughing it. Can I sleep near the wall? I need to plug in my blanket. <laughs> Here, let me take this in the kitchen. Oh, you better put it in the oven now. I'm supposed to tell you 325 degrees for two hours. My mother said you know what that means. <laughs> tell you what, why don't you follow me and let me introduce you to the oven? <laughs> What do you think? She's beautiful, isn't she, Melissa? Oh, yes, you're gorgeous. You know, in your category. <laughs> Robin, you're beautiful in any category. Here, take a look. Do I look sensual and evil? <laughs> of course not. Oh. <laughs> we'll keep working on it. Wait till the guys see you. I do look beautiful, don't I? What about our hair? Do you think we should do something with it? Why not? Let's cut it and dye it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. If that's Kaz again, I'll get it. I'm getting a sugar low. Me too. Don't worry, I'm not coming in. I know, you want to be alone and listen to music, so I brought you a CD, Top Tunes of the 70s. No Donnie and Marie, I checked it. Well, thank you very much, Sheila. That's really very nice of you. But there's only one problem. I, I don't have a CD player. You're not going to hit me for a raise, are you? <laughs> Hi, Miss Huffnagel. Hey. Hi. This is your idea of being alone, running a daycare center? Oh. Well, I suppose you didn't really want to be alone. You just didn't want to be with me. Now, I hope you don't think I'm overreacting. But I hate you, and you're fired. <laughs> Sheila! Sheila, I wasn't planning on any company, but Lucy's so upset about her father that I thought it'd be best if she did have a party and get her mind off it. You know, I never had a slumber party when I was little. Oh, come on, every girl. No, not me. I had four brothers. No mother in her right mind would let their daughters near my house. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Sheila. Me too. Sheila, would you like to... I'll get my jammies. Oh. <laughs> How about a sexy look like Kathleen Turner? Or perky like Christy Brinkley? Or wicked like Madonna? Will you guys wait a minute until I find out what I can do and then we can name it? Okay. Oh, that's for me. I left this number. That'll be Michael, Robert, or David. Or Freddie, or Harry, or Tom. <laughs> Hello? Daddy? Or Daddy? <laughs> of course I'm here. Where else would I be? Mrs. McNeil, Lucy, and Robin. No, Robin's a girl. Am I ever? <laughs> yes, I'll call first thing in the morning. Bye. 
fathers, they don't give you any room to breathe. They are so protective, aren't they? Sorry, I didn't mean to mention fathers. I mean in the present tense. Oh, honey, forget it. We're having a good time here. What do you think of Robin's hair? <laughs> Mrs. McNeil, when does a woman reach her sexual peak? When her mother says she can. <laughs> That's nice, Mom, but I think you can do better than that. Yeah, make her more glamorous, like a Vegas showgirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Aha! <laughs> now we're getting it. <laughs> Honey, you're not going any further. <laughs> Here's the pizza you ordered. <laughs> we didn't order a pizza. Well, somebody did. I guess it was me. <laughs> but if you don't want it, pepperoni, mushrooms, double cheese. You can't come in, but thanks for the pizza. <laughs> wow. Thank you. What happened to you? <laughs> all right. I may pay for the movie after all. About the movie, I have to cancel that. Why? I think I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that. <laughs> but remember, when I get muscles and hair in my chest and taller and I got my new sports car, don't come knocking on my door. <laughs> Robin, you were a little rough on him. Hey. It's a new ball game. <laughs> oh, Miss McNeil, I love this look. There's just one problem. What? How can I get through the rest of my life without my father seeing me? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, come on. You know, this reminds me of the first time Lucy put on lipstick. She was only three. Three? <laughs> she put on the walls, the lamp, the sofa. <laughs> Hey, Mom, remember the time we decided to go to the department store to get my ears pierced and Dad insisted on going with us? <laughs> yeah, you guys really have to know my husband to appreciate this, but he was six foot two, all muscle, a fireman with commendations for heroism, and when the woman started to pierce her ears, he fainted. <laughs> Mom, I don't think I want to talk about this. Oh, honey. I just know this whole thing is my fault. <laughs> oh, Robin. Come on. Mm -hmm. Psst. Psst. <laughs> Wait a minute, I smell something. I had garlic bread Tuesday. <laughs> no, I smell smoke. It's coming from the kitchen. Robin, call the fire department. Melissa, it's your casserole. I guess it's done. I'll put some water on it. Are you crazy? This is a grease fire. Get out of here. There's your problem. <laughs> You don't see many casseroles being cooked at 550 degrees. This is true. 550? My mother said to cook it for two hours at 325, so I figured why wait so long, so I changed it to one hour at 550. <laughs> or 15 minutes at 2,000 degrees. I see your logic, but I'm afraid it doesn't work here. Well, at least you had a fire extinguisher and you didn't use water. <laughs> that would have been really stupid. <laughs> I think I'll go in the other room. Don't feel bad. It's not the first stupid thing you've done. <laughs> Actually, my mom was the one who put out the fire. See, my dad was a fireman. He taught us how to handle a grease fire. Hey, hey. your husband was a fireman? Yeah, in New York. Oh. He was killed in a fire. Oh, sorry. Today would have been their anniversary. Oh, oh that's tough. <laughs> now we'll go in the other room. I think you've cheered them up enough. <laughs> We always hate to hear things like that. It hits close to home. You know, ma'am, uh, instinct tells me to give you a hug, but 
We just met, and you're in your pajamas and everything. I mean, uh, I know, I know what you mean. I appreciate the thought. Good. Well, hang in there. Can I get you guys a soft drink or something? I'd offer you a casserole, but... No, no, uh, that's fine. I, really, I, I think we ought to be heading back. Yeah. If you two were ever down near the fire department, drop in and say hello. Thank you. Maybe we will. Yeah, we're uh, usually just sitting around. Not too many fires around here. Are you guys sure you don't want to stay? There's plenty of junk food in the other room. I really don't feel like washing the truck again. <laughs> Actually, Gus is cooking dinner tonight. Junk food sounds better. You got it. Licorice whips all around. Great, thanks. Help yourselves, guys. Yeah, sure. Jeez, look at this spread. This is gourmet junk food. <laughs> and if I know firemen, there won't be anything left to save us the trouble of cleaning up. Yeah. You know, for a day we were trying to get through without thinking of Daddy, he sure popped up a lot. Hmm. Anyway, there's no way that I could ever look at you and not think of him. Nor would I ever want to. That nose, those eyes, the goofy way you smile. What goofy way? That goofy way. <laughs> you know, we were wrong wanting to be alone and not think of Dad. Sure, it hurts to miss him so much, but we'll always have all those great things to remember. Yeah. Come on, let's go join the party. Okay. How are we doing, guys? Great. Mm. You got any root beer? In the refrigerator. I'll get it. McNeil, what's going on in here? There's a fire engine outside. No problem, Sheila. Come on, enjoy the party. Hey, Sheila, how you doing? Charlie! Bill! This is a slumber party? <laughs> and I've been missing them all these years. <laughs> you know, this is just the kind of party your father would have thrown. Plenty of food and guys in rubber boots and axes. 